The Nobel Prize was just the beginning. Find out about the new frontiers of super-resolution microscopy this week on Light Matters. This is Light Matters for September 2nd, 2015. I'm your host, James Lowe. On this week's show, we'll learn about new techniques pushing super-resolution microscopy even further to reveal the inner lives of cells. We'll also see how light could play a role in tissue engineering. But first, Photonic Spectra editor Justine Murphy takes us to Atlanta for an outdoor art exhibition worthy of the International Year of Light. Daylight isn't always needed to enjoy the vibrancy of flowers and other plants. Sometimes, like right now at the Atlanta Botanical Garden, all it takes is a little creativity and light-based art. Light in the Garden showcases unique pieces that were created using hundreds of miles of fiber optics, LEDs, and repurposed materials. Creator Bruce Monroe is a British artist who frequently uses light as a medium. At dusk, the gardens and conservatories become an enchanting, vibrant landscape through six different installations. The Forest of Light displays more than 30,000 flower-like spheres of light on thin stems. Water towers feature 20 six-foot tall illuminated columns constructed from more than 200 recycled plastic bottles. Light in the Garden has been on display since spring and closes on October 3rd. Thanks, Justine. Next up, Biophotonics editor Rod Pedrotti tells us about a new discovery enabled by optogenetics that could usher in light-based tissue engineering. Embryonic stem cells are the precursors to every kind of tissue in the body, and now by altering a single gene, researchers at the University of California, San Francisco have caused mouse stem cells to develop into mature neurons under constant 24-hour illumination with blue light. A protein inside the cells prevented them from differentiating when subjected to intermittent light. The researchers described this as a kind of internal timer that lets stem cells tune out extraneous biological noise and act only when they detect a consistent, appropriate molecular signal. Similar mechanisms could regulate stem cells' differentiation into other types of tissues as well. Working on that theory, UCSF faculty fellow Matthew Thompson said that one day complex light patterns could be used to transform large colonies of stem cells into complete organs, and those organs could be implanted into patients who desperately need them. Thanks, Rod. After the break, we'll see how one Nobel Prize winner isn't resting on his laureate. Stay with us. Do you want to be recognized as an industry leader? Enter the 2016 PRISM Awards today. The awards are presented by SPIE and Photonics Media, and they recognize the most innovative new products in optics and photonics. Your product will be seen by experts in the industry and promoted on numerous industry websites. You'll also receive a product profile published in the SPIE Digital Library, plus tickets to the 2016 PRISM Awards reception. This is your chance to take the spotlight in the photonics industry. Apply online by October 2015 at prismawards.org, and we'll see you in San Francisco. Welcome back. Last year, Eric Betzig was one of three people to win the Nobel Prize in Chemistry for his work on super-resolution microscopy. The award recognized work from the late 90s, but Betzig didn't stop there. Last week, Betzig and colleagues at the Genelia Research Campus of the Howard Hughes Medical Institute in Virginia unveiled two new techniques for tracking subcellular processes at resolutions up to three times higher than conventional diffraction-limited microscopy. What's new is the ability to get super-resolution data from live cells. Other super-resolution techniques rely on high-intensity light that is damaging to cells. The new techniques use low-intensity light, making it possible to repeatedly image a sample without damaging it. Both techniques are based on Structured Illumination Microscopy, or SIM, which gathers data by projecting patterns of light onto a sample and measuring the response of fluorescent tags. Among other observations, the Betzig team used the techniques to answer questions about how cells absorb outside molecules. Meanwhile, another group has added a different functionality to super-resolution microscopy. Their technique, called SR-STORM, gathers spectral as well as spatial information on a sample, which could be useful for understanding the behavior of individual molecules and providing true color nanoscale images. SR-STORM was developed at Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory, where researchers used it to discover differences in the cytoskeletons of axons and dendrites, which are two parts of a neuron. 
Light Matters, the industry's number one newscast, is moving to a new schedule after this show so the team can develop and deliver expanded news and feature reporting in a variety of formats and media. To stay informed about the new Light Matters newscast schedule and the exciting new content and programs coming to Light Matters and Photonics.com, be sure to follow us on social media and sign up for the Light Matters weekly newsletter at Photonics.com slash subscribe. Thanks for watching.